Hey everybody, it's Emmy Kirshner, and today I'm wrapping up our final series of expert interviews with all the things that we tend to ignore or we don't take care of before the end of the year. And today I have the amazing, distinct pleasure to uh, interview and talk with my friend, very good friend, Mackenzie Frankel. Uh, Mackenzie is a financial advisor, wealth manager. She um, is a partner in Entrust Financial. Um, and what I love about Mackenzie, and I'm going to just share with you right up the bat, she is my financial advisor. I cannot tell you how many people I have talked to um, that are fantastic financial advisors, but just didn't fit my needs and didn't really want to listen to what um, I had to say and what my goals were. They wanted to kind of put me in the box. And that is one of the best things about Mackenzie and her firm is that she, she and her partner, Jocelyn, um, and now her other partner, Jen, too, all offer um, holistic, well-rounded, well-thought-out plans and help you reach the, the financial goals that you have and not just something that they think that they can pull out of a box. Mackenzie also um, does investment planning. She does retirement planning. She does college planning. She does wealth uh, transfer and protection. Um, and you specialize in planning for business owners. So this means you people. Okay. <laughs> and not only that, but you have such a big heart. You're on Impact 100. You're part of NABO. Um, you're with the uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania Center for Work. I'm forgetting the name. I know it's PCAE. Yeah, Advancing Entrepreneurs. Yes, there we go. So thank you and welcome. And I'm so excited to talk with you and to have everybody hear what you have to say and, and knowledge and wisdom. Oh, well, thank you. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, super excited. So share because I think your background is super um, exciting and a little bit different. So if you don't mind, share how you decided and kind of evolved into a wealth manager. Yeah, well, um, you know, I guess really from a very young age, um, my, uh, I grew up in a small little town on a dirt road and it, most people I don't think really had financial advisors at that point in time where I grew up. Everybody thought of a financial advisor as somebody for the rich. Mm -hmm. um, times have really changed since then. And, you know, we're in a totally different location, but I grew up with my mom who handled the money in the house actually. And she um, actually had a, a big interest in investing. Um, and my parents really never made a lot of money. I mean, they were both, um, you know, government employees, um, but they, I felt like they really made good financial decisions uh, mm -hmm. because they were careful with their money. And my mom would go through the Wall Street Journal with me at a young age and say, okay, I'm going to take this amount of money and this is where I'm going to invest it. And, you know, talk about why investing was important. So right. that's when my interest really began uh, back at that moment in time. And so I always knew you know, from a very young age that saving for the future and investing was important. And I, you know, I really thank my mom for that. But uh, my first uh, financial advisor position was at the big firm, um, you know, a couple of big firms, UBS, Wealth Management and Morgan Stanley. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I really, you know, I, I knew that I've always have done this because I've wanted to help people. And when I was at the big firm, I, I felt a little compromised um, in that they were really uh, wanting me to sell products and that's never been something, I've never considered myself a salesperson, that's never right. juiced me and that was just against kind of my values. So um, after searching long and hard, I stumbled, literally stumbled across my partner Jocelyn, which is, you know, really changed my whole um my whole financial advising career because right. now we're independent and it's just totally different. Yeah. And that's what I love. Well, about both you and Jocelyn, but just, I mean, as you sat down with me a couple of years ago to do uh, my planning, you know, you really wanted to hear what my goals were and you really wanted to understand what it was I wanted so that you could make it happen for me. 
And everything from, you know, I've shared with you that I want to be able to send my boys to Las Vegas when they're 21 to not necessarily retiring at, you know, at 65 and how to make those things work and get there and what I need to do now. And, and that listening, I think, is rare. So I, I have a great appreciation for that. Oh, that's great. You know, I'm, again, I'm happy to help. And, you know, my, honestly, I believe, um, and, my, and really it's, you know, my whole firm believes that investments are really just tools to help our clients achieve everything that's important to them. Right. And just like you would go into a doctor's office and say, you know, I have this pain, I'm not feeling well, you know, I need that, I need a solution for whatever. Uh, the illness may be, and they prescribe you a medication. It's really the same thing as far as investments are concerned in our eyes. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so we're really just looking to help our clients reach all their goals, everything that's important to them. Yeah, which I love. I love. So if somebody is either just getting started or they haven't really, you know, they've been on autopilot for a while or they haven't really taken a look of, of where they're at, what are some easy steps that they can take to get their financial life organized? Well, I mean, a good first step is really to make sure that they have everything in one place. Mm -hmm. um, so what I find, and when a lot of people come into my office, they have, you know, statements scattered. They're, they have a hard time locating everything. They don't know where their insurance is, their, you know, life insurance, disability insurance any of their retirement accounts or investment accounts, um, legal documents like wills, all that sort of thing. Really a good first step is getting everything organized and you could use a, a good old fashioned uh, filing you know, cabinet or you could do it electronically. Um, but it, you know, the other thing is just consolidating accounts. What I find is that people, I think the biggest culprit are people are, are at different jobs throughout their lifetimes. And then, and they leave all their retirement accounts at the old, you know, employer. And then time passes and they have a harder and harder time of locating that money. And it's like out of sight, out of mind. Right. So it, they're not paying attention to it. So consolidating those retirement accounts, it would be, is a, actually a great way to st start to begin to get organized. I would imagine too that if you've got like more than one 401k or old 401k mm -hmm. kind of sitting out there that you're not paying attention to, like you're not getting the maximum return either because it's Exactly. Yeah. And the smartest people, you know, it's the smartest people uh, fall into that. Yeah. Um, I, for example, I had a um, uh, an attorney come into my office, uh, and I mean, a big time attorney who, who's making over $500,000 a year. Um, and he, you know, ha he's been at a number of different firms throughout his career. And he, he came in and he's like, I, you know, he had all these statements from all these different retirement accounts and most of the money, he didn't even know how it was invested. A lot of it was in cash. So like over the last, you know, nine years sitting in cash or like a money market account and losing all those returns that he could have had, he was, he was very embarrassed. He was ashamed actually. Right. But, but he's not alone. There's so many people out there that do that. Yeah. And I think it with so many other things like life gets in the way and you mean to deal with it and then you don't and you forget and it's not the like top level priority, but I know for me, you know, we speak quarterly, so it becomes top of mind for me on a regular basis. But even in my like winding down of the year, it's like, let's take, you know, the next step for whatever it is, it's still not handled and move forward with it. Exactly. Exactly. And, and figure some of that out. So how can somebody make sure that they're on track to accomplish everything that, that's important to them? Well, I, you know, I think a, a a good first step. If you're in a relationship, obviously, you know, actually have a conversation with your significant other about what's important to you in the next 10, you know, 10, 20 years. What do you really, if you could wave your magic wand, what would you like to accomplish? And actually write down your goals. 
Yeah. Um, because I find a lot of times it's, it's just like us with business or, or anything. It doesn't really come to fruition unless you write it down, mm -hmm. um, and start kind of focusing on it. Um, because once you write it down and you establish that as like, okay, this is what I would like to accomplish. Then it's like, okay, the next step is starting to save towards those goals and have buckets. I like the bucket approach a lot, actually, where, where it's like, have a bucket for every goal. Right. You know, um, you know, I, I had this, uh, woman who was, I mean, she's an amazing entrepreneur, right? Amazing entrepreneur. Um, she, her motto in life was like, I like to make money, not count it. <laughs> and, and so like she, she, I mean, she does really well for herself. She, she's accumulated millions, millions of dollars on her own without any help of anybody. She's not married or anything. Um, but she didn't, you know, she literally just didn't know kind of what she was even saving for. Right. Um, and so now she's on track. She's identified that she'd like to make work optional, you know, in the next like 15, 20 years. And so now she understands like, okay, I, I'm saving towards that goal directly. So right. my, I'm, you know, my first, my, I think a good first step is just identifying what you would like to accomplish and write it down. Yes. And as you all know, I am a big proponent of not only getting that clarity of what you want, but writing it down because the writing it down is what makes it real. Exactly. And it's, and it's even if you can't put everything that you want in that bucket to make it, you know, to make it really happen, start something like something is better than nothing. And I think that's really, really important too. Like, even if you can't put the $400 a month away, start with a hundred, if that's where you're at, because that accumulates. Exactly. And it all adds up. And if it's invested, it's growing and working for you. Um, and every little dollar counts and the more time it has to grow, the more money you're going to have in the future. Right. right. Would you share too, like, cause I think this is something that people don't think about is that kind of dollar cost averaging piece where, you know, putting in consistently putting something in over time, you end up with more money than putting a lump sum in later. Yeah. Well, I mean, when it, when it comes to investing mm -hmm. time is really like the greatest asset because the longer it has to sit in the investments and kind of and grow for the future, the more money that you have. And if you can, you know, kind of like retirement plans, uh, like people that are employed and they're constantly putting, you know, money into their retirement plan with every paycheck, there, anybody that's contributing like that over time at different periods, you're getting into the market at different periods of time which is a good thing because you're not putting it all in when the market's really high, um, you know, which, which sometimes happens from an emotional standpoint. It's like everybody hears the mark, the market's doing well. So that's when they want to put money in. Nobody wants to put money in when they don't hear the market's doing well. Right. But in the reality, the best time to put money to work is when the market's not doing well, when everything is cheap. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, because then it has a lot more potential for upside. Um, so it's a dollar cost averaging where you're putting money away kind of every month towards meeting those goals is a great way to go. Right. Awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Um, how do people know if, if their investments or what they're investing in is aligned with what their goals are? Well, I mean, a lot of times, like whenever, whenever um, I'm meeting with somebody, okay, it's, it's figuring out, okay, what is it that they want to accomplish mm -hmm. and what is that timeline in kind of involved, okay, with, with how long do they have until they are, are going to be accomplishing this goal. Right. So if it's somebody that is, uh, you know, very young and they're going to be retiring 30 years, from that point and they're saving for that and they know they don't have to touch that money, they can be a lot more aggressive with their investing than mm -hmm. somebody that's getting ready to retire in five years. Okay. Right. Or somebody that's in retirement. Right. So um, it's all about timelines and the more time you have, again, the more time, the better. 
Um, but it's never too late. That's the other thing. Uh, but the more risk you can take, so the more stock, the more stocks you can have in your investments versus bonds. Bonds are the safe piece. Stocks mm -hmm. are the more aggressive side of things. Um, so that's one way to know if your investments are in line with your goals. It's like how much stock do you have opposed to bonds? If mm -hmm. you if you have more stock, that means you're able and willing to take more risk mm -hmm. and you have more time, you know, to assume that risk for that to be appropriate for you. Mm -hmm. If you have more bonds, that means that you don't, you're not taking as much risk. So you probably won't get as much return, but it's okay because you'll have, your timeline is not as long and you don't want to assume that kind of risk or volatility. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, but you know what, another, another thing that, um, relating back to that question of how do you know if your investments are in line with your goals, yeah. another piece of that now that I think is getting a lot is spoken about a lot more is, um, and Emmy, which I know that's important to you is impact investing. Yeah. Uh, making sure that the companies that you're investing in are also in line with your goals. I mean, maybe you want to talk a little bit about that. Sure. I mean, for me, it's, you know. I want to make an impact with whatever I'm doing. And there's a number of different factors with that. Some of it's social responsibility. Some of it's just, you know, mindset and uplifting. All the work I do with my clients is about helping them succeed so that they can create this ripple effect of general positivity, well-being, um, you know, prosperity, abundance, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So part of the work you and I have done is that as we've, you know, created my goals and we're shifting, um, you know, my investments and my planning and everything we're looking for, for me, it, fun companies is like my number one, one thing. So when, you know, I said I wanted to invest in Tesla, you were like, sure, let's make it happen. Let's see how it works with everything else so that you, and that was the great part about our conversation was that we, we made a decision based on my fun and the sustainability and the desire to have impact but we also, you aligned it so that it fits in with my goals and my portfolio is still balanced. Yeah. Exactly. And because it, a lot of times people think, well, if I invest in socially responsible companies, um, I'm not going to make as much money. And, and the truth of the matter is that was probably the case 10 years ago, but now times have changed and there's so many more socially responsible options out there. Um, to help people kind of, you know, make uh, co competitive returns, but also have the uh, investments in line with their values, which I think is really important. And yeah. it's been a nice change in my industry. Yeah, I'm excited about it because I had heard, you know, from other financial advisors 10 years ago that, oh, you shouldn't even bother because you won't make any money. And that's not the case anymore. And I think that that a lot of the companies that are starting to emerge, um, you know, they're starting to make money. They're, the technology has improved to a point where, you know, it it's working finally. It's kind of like taking that idea, you know, 10 years ago that really needed all of this time to kind of incubate and uh, come to fruition. And now the companies are becoming profitable, making money, making, uh, you know, making the sales, which is fantastic for me. But for people watching, it's, you know, what are your core values? And consider making some of your financial decisions based around that, too. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody in alignment. Mm -hmm. um, here's one that I love, because I know that I've had this conversation with my brother, um, and we've had it with you, is, you know, every once in a while he gets, not scared, it's not the right word, but, you know, he's like, why should I just pull everything out and be in cash. Yeah. <laughs> we just put it under the mattress. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Your brother is definitely one of those people. And I know, um, believe it or not, in the past, I would say, well, I could think of three clients offhand that have come to me um, in the last like couple of years that have had all cash. And are, they finally, you know, are they have finally found somebody that they feel comfortable with investing that cash with? But um, yeah, you know, cash 
in my, uh, in my mind, it is a safe way of going broke. Um, you know, yes, you do need enough cash in your emergency funds for, you know, a rainy day if, if you ha incur a big expense. Right. Um, you definitely want three to six months worth of living expense in cash um, just for a rainy day. But the problem with, you know, I have, I've, like I said, I've had, here's an example, that very smart, savvy, entrepreneurial woman that I spoke about a couple of pair, you know, a couple of questions ago, she literally, you know, I mean, she's, she managed to tuck away, uh, I think like $4 million, $5 million all in cash. And literally, uh, she was afraid to yeah. invest it. She's willing to take all that risk doing all that business, you know, in her business life. But uh, when it came to investing, she was just scared. So it was all in cash. And she's like, well, at least it's in cash. It's safe. But the problem with it being in cash is that inflation is right. eating away at the value. Okay. So it's it, literally, it's a safe way of going broke over time. Right. Um, you know, everything gets more expensive as, as every year passes on. I mean, if you think back to um, even let's say 10 years ago, you know, it probably, it cost me like $13 to fill up my gas tank. You know, today it's, it costs like $40 right. and, and going to the grocery store, same thing. You know, it, it cost me like $50 to get all the groceries I need. Now today, the same amount of groceries is costing me like a hundred dollars. So everything gets more expensive over time. And the average rate of inflation is actually about 3%. Two and a half to three percent a year. You know, there'll be years where it's more, years where it's less. But so you figure about every twenty years, your the 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 expenses, your general expenses, about double mm -hmm. um, in 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 you know amount. Right. So basically, your money should be. You want your money to make at least three percent a year uh, to keep up with inflation. And right. if it's not, then your you know your 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 pot of money is. Um, losing value. Right. And just for my non-money people, because I know you're out there, was, essentially what that means is that cash that you're holding on to is not the same value next year that it is this year. Mm -hmm. So if you even just, if four or five million sounds like, you know, a lot of money, even like at a thousand dollars, that thousand dollars that you're holding on to is, um, you know, it's nine thousand. Nine thousand. It's nine hundred dollars, and instead of eleven hundred dollars, and that's that's huge. It's it's a big deal, and it all adds up over time. Yeah, it and I know with my brother, he wants to pull out when the market's high. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So you're missing, and you're missing gains then by doing that. Exactly. And then it's also hard to figure out when to get back into the market. You know, that's yeah. the other thing. It's like, okay, well, pull out when the market's high. And then maybe the market doesn't fall right away. It keeps going higher. And then finally, maybe like a year later, later it falls. And then it'll start going back up. But you have to figure out when is the right time to get back in. With the, Otherwise, you lose all that upside. So it's very, diff it's very difficult to make that decision right, you know, make that call right twice right. Getting right. Out and getting back in. Most yeah. people don't do that successfully. No. And again, that's why that consistent investing makes such a big difference. Yes, absolutely. Um, just a couple more things. I really, I love, you've given so much information and mm -hmm. content and value to everybody. Um, what are some of the steps that somebody could take to promote, you know, what will work one day? You know, like what's, what's my number? What's, how do people figure that out? And what's some steps they can do to get to that number? Yeah. So basically, you know, honestly, the first step to figuring out what your number is, like what do you need so that you can actually one day step away from, from work or make work optional. Yeah. Um, the very first step is really figuring out it, today what you need to be comfortable. And I mean, no matter how, rich or poor you are. Okay. Cause sometimes I have people be like, Oh, I make a lot of money. I don't have to really know what my expenses are. That's really not the case. Right. Um, you know, you need to have a good handle on, okay, what is it today that you need to be comfortable? Mm -hmm. Um, so once you know that, then what we can do or what you can do is kind of inflate that into the future and say, okay, 
well, if I, let's say I need uh, $100,000 a year today to be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're going to retire in 20 years from now and inflation, let's say you have an inflation, let's say we say inflation's around 3%. So you figure 20 years from now, $100,000 is going to be around, I mean, I'm not doing the math, but it's going to be around $200,000. Okay. And and that means then that's what you will need 20 years from now to have about the same living standard as you do today, living off of a hundred thousand right, dollars. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, but I, so the first step is get a good sense of your expenses today and the way to do that. I mean, everybody has their own, um, you know, everybody has their own way, you know, of what's comfortable right. to them. I like a, a spreadsheet an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> I have a great one and I'm, and I'm always happy to, to provide that to anybody that would like it. So, okay. um, you know, I mean, you can share that, but okay. there's a great spreadsheet, but there's also a great system. It's free. It's called mint.com, mm -hmm. like, um, the herb mint. Yeah. Um, it's and I, by, that's a great system, right? It's, a, it coordinates or it's owned by Quicken, the mint.com. Yep. It's owned by Quicken. And it's, it's a kind of like a, um, a budgeting, um, it helps people manage their expenses. And so they can have all of their accounts kind of flow into it. Right. And helps organize everything too, which is nice. Yeah. Everything in one place. <laughs> yes. Yes, definitely. In getting to that number too, like if people know that they want to travel more, um, you know, when work becomes optional. Mm -hmm. Do you suggest that they think about like how often they want to travel and what those trips might look like? Because there's a huge variation. You know, Absolutely. Because you can yeah. plan cost and then guesstimate further down. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Like figure out, okay, well, if I'm going to want to travel more, I, you know, what, what kind of trips do you like to do? And it, I, honestly, this is all about estimating. You're not like, this isn't, you can't be too precise here, but it's better to overestimate than right. underestimate. Right. Um, so overestimate the expenses rather than underestimate them. And a lot of people will say, oh, well, I won't need as much money in retirement as I do now because, you know, I'll cut back on this or that. I won't have a mortgage or a mortgage. I won't have, but the, the thing is usually what happens, what I see, cause I, I do actually have a lot of people that are retired and that have been working with us over like they've been, they've been living happily, you know, in retirement for over 20 years working with us. And the, the reality is most people don't want to cut back on expenses in retirement. There's just right. different expenses. Right. So, you know, they have grandkids maybe in retirement that they want to be able to spoil a little bit. They have more time to travel because they're not working. I mean, if you're not working, most of the time you're out spending money. <laughs> So unless you want to sit at home and watch television by yourself constantly, which, you know, most people do not want to do that. It's good to just use your current um, expenses kind of as a guideline because people tend to stay, uh, you know, the, people are creatures of habit. So they tend to keep their expenses around the same in retirement that they are, you know, right. today. Right. And that's part of what I love about your process is it was for me, it was very clarifying about what I wanted more. Like just, it's not, because I think a lot of times, um, and particularly years ago, it was like, oh, you're not going to need as much when you retire. And, and that's not true. There's a whole host of things I want to experience as I get older, and that's going to take money. It's true. It's definitely true. And it's not good to, you know, the other thing is to healthcare. I mean, healthcare is only getting more expensive. I know. Yeah. So thank you. I appreciate that because that, that's, I think, really helpful. And I hope that it helps you um, as you're watching to start thinking about what is it that you want? You know, I'm all about, as I just said a little while ago, all about really getting that clarity because then once you know that you want it, you can bring it in and then you can plan for having the, the money and the resources to go do it. And that's what's so fun for me about investing and um, and having the plan is it gives me that, that action roadmap. And that's essentially what you do is you give people the, 
the roadmap to get from A to B. Absolutely. And I love seeing people achieve everything that's important yeah. to them and, you know, you know, really partnering with them. Mm -hmm. And I see it over and over again. I, I mean, people, I work with a lot of people that inherit money and they've never even had money before and they didn't know, um, they had no idea what to do with it. Um, and same with, uh, there was a woman actually um, that started working with me, you know, it was probably five years ago or something like that. She sticks with me because I think women oftentimes doubt themselves when it comes to money. Um, and this particular woman, she's, when she met with me, she was like 55 and for the, she had always had her husband, she's an entrepreneur, successful businesswoman, her husband, um, very supportive, very nice guy. He always handled the money because in their mind, that was just what was supposed to happen. And he felt like he needed to assume that responsibility. Well, when her father passed away, she inherited um, a, a bunch of money. And so for the first time in her life, she wanted to finally, um, become what she referred to, she said, become financially literate, you know, and like, and take, uh, and make good financial decisions with this money and become more involved in the family finances. And so working with her and her husband, I mean, they actually, they, 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 they made so many great decisions together and are still making so many great decisions together now financially. They're so much better together working together as a couple than they were uh, than when the husband was just handling the money. And in fact, the husband even said that he wasn't even happy doing that. <laughs> um, so, you know, I think for women, especially sometimes it's, they lack confidence when it comes to uh, handling finances. I would totally agree. And um, ladies, if you're watching, women make better money managers. Just saying. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, you have an amazing offer. And instead of me kind of rambling on about it, I think it'd be so much better if you share um, some of what you sent me because I, I'm looking at this and it's, I wish I could get a second opinion from you, but I don't need <laughs> I get to talk to you all the time. Oh, yeah, sure. No, so for um, for for anybody who is interested, we've actually have designed the second opinion service offer, and it's specifically for people that you know have currently have um, investments, whether it be in retirement plans or you know wherever, um, and they just want to make sure that their investments are in line with their goals and that they're doing the right thing with their money. Um, we're happy for anybody that's interested. We are happy to review, um, have an initial consultation with you, go over your goals and what you're trying to accomplish, and then review your investments to make sure that they're in line with those goals. Right. Which I love because you want to be doing this to me quarterly, but at least once a year. Just in general, because things change, life happens. What was important to you last year may not be the same thing that's going to be important to you this year. So, um, at the bottom of this video is going to be Mackenzie's email and phone number. I'm asking you to reach out to her. Just do this, okay? Because it's amazing, it's fun, it's not scary. As you can tell, Mackenzie's super knowledgeable, um, and you're going to have just such a sense of ease by kind of checking this off the list of things to do um, that maybe you haven't thought of for this year. So with that note, I want to thank you, Mackenzie. Do you want to add anything else or? No, no, no. Thank you for having me, Emmy. This oh, is a lot of fun, honestly. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And I'm really, I like talking about money. So um, it's, it's fun. So with that, I want to thank everybody else. Um, this, as I said, is the last of the three interviews with all of my experts. And I can hardly wait to see you all in the new year. So have wonderful holidays and happy 2018. Bye. Bye.